Well, this is Bob Browder. I'm uh, discussing uh, what I think is hopefully a better policy direction in how we do school testing in Nebraska uh, to hopefully fix some of the problems uh, of the last decade or two, which I don't think has been useful. Maybe has caused more harm than good. Uh, and so, you know, a couple of years ago, this came out in Lincoln Journal Star, and uh, whenever these uh, test scores come out, they, they make me cringe. Uh, knowing what I know about evaluation from my healthcare background, but also with working with our public schools uh, for the last 13, 14 years, uh, there's another pattern here than just the scores and the test. And uh, Right here, what you see, these are all the elementary schools in Lincoln, Nebraska, and of course districts across the state. But there's another pattern that here than just performance and academic testing. And here it is. So this is uh, those same elementary schools in Lincoln that I put together a few years ago, pre-COVID. Uh, on the vertical axis here is how well this school stored on, on language arts testing. And on the horizontal axis is the percentage of the, uh, the kids in the school that are in poverty uh, based on free reduced cost meals. And what you see is that the, the excellent schools are in the wealthy neighborhoods and the great and good are in the middle income neighborhoods and the improved uh, uh, our schools are all in the poor neighborhoods and so the question is are we really measuring the be the, the quality of the school or are we just measuring the poverty of the kids? Uh, have we just created a fancy expensive way to figure out where the rich and poor kids something are we already know. So this year uh, when this test came up I asked our evaluation department Lincoln Public Schools to kind of run this correlation with a little more statistical data behind it and so this is the same uh, slide basically but three years newer uh, and uh, what you'll notice here this is every elementary school in Lincoln Nebraska plotted along the same the English language language arts proficiency here versus the percentage of kids on free reduced cars to lunch here and you'll see the correlation this number over here called R squared linear this is the measure of the strength of the correlation and to see a uh, measure of 0.89 you don't see that a lot in social uh, science type research like this and so uh, this really calls into the question are we measuring the the how, uh, the how good the school is at teaching kids or are we just measuring poverty levels and I think mostly we're, we're most more measuring poverty levels than we're actually measuring uh, the quality of the school. Uh, middle schools you see the same thing uh, 0.94 even higher actually and so these are all of the elementary schools in Lincoln Nebraska so as a school board member this really doesn't help me much when I see these tests and I actually think what's reported in the newspaper is uh, frankly misleading uh, so a few years ago uh, I was working with one of the evaluation folks and he was trying to put together some of this for the state because what would really help me as a school board member in Lincoln is to know well how do our schools compare to the other schools in the state some comparison might actually be beneficial uh, and this was actually done and uh, what I would argue is that this m would be much more or much better to look at than what's uh, typical in a newspaper because a good school isn't the schools over here the good schools are the schools that are above this red line uh, so I would say if anything, the excellent schools are these schools, not necessarily all of these schools. Although this one might be excellent, but this one is not definitely not excellent just because it's in a wealthy neighborhood. This is actually a really excellent school. Whoever's, whoever's getting that good of results with that high poverty level must really know what they're doing. So uh, what we did is we put together this data so that you could do this because I think this would be a much better uh, way of looking at things. So this is actually all of the 2020-2021 uh, uh, academic testing for all of the elementary schools in Nebraska with that fitted line. What you have here is a way to look at English versus math, uh, third to fifth grade versus seventh to eighth grade. Uh, you can also highlight bit, big, bigger districts. And this is a, a live uh, Tableau visual where you can play with it yourself. You can go to healthynebraska.org and you can play with this yourself. And what you can do, and of course me being a Lincoln Public Schools school board member, I wanna know what Lincoln looks like. So what I did, I clicked Lincoln and uh, there you can see a fitted line for the the, the faded one is, is the state the dark the brighter one this is actually Lincoln Public Schools fitted line plus all the schools that are Lincoln Public Schools elementary schools as a school board member this actually does tell me something useful it does tell me that it looks like on average our schools do better than state performance so it argues that uh, our schools are bringing something to the kids and providing some extra value uh, compared to the average school in the state so as a school board member this is, gives me some uh, confidence that actually we are doing a better job uh, and you can highlight specific schools so this is Elliott Entom Elementary School which is in my district which is not only better than state average but even better than uh, the school district average so this is Elliott is certainly bringing some value to our schools and performing at a level uh, consistent with a with a middle income neighborhood despite being a low income neighborhood that actually provides some useful uh, information to me uh, the World Herald this this past year came out and they basically this uh, did kind of what Lincoln Journal Star did and if you looked at this you might jump to the conclusion that Omaha Public Schools is a bad school district and Millard is a good school district because look at those differences in scores but is it really and I, I actually don't think there's really that big a difference uh, if you look at Omaha Public Schools, for example, you'll see that their fitted line isn't that much different than state averages. It just so happens that they have all of the lower or most of the lower income schools in Omaha. Whereas if you go to Millard, 
about the same fitted line actually they have all the wealthier kids in in, in uh, the Omaha uh, metro area so are we measuring the that Millard is a better school than Omaha public schools or are we just saying they got more wealthy kids and these folks got more poor kids and I think that's really about all you can conclude from this uh, although you could get some benefit by looking at individual schools maybe this school needs some help and this school is doing really well and we should pay attention to what's going right there but as a district level I don't think this is that uh, helpful to us so solutions. Uh, if NSCAS doesn't tell us much, why keep doing it? I mean, I don't think it, it provides a little bit useful, but really not not enough to justify all the time and effort spent. Uh, I'd, I'd rather take all that money we're spending on, on, on old NSCAS and use that on teaching. Or even better yet, maybe we could switch to something more useful, like uh, the concept called MAP testing. Uh, MAP is an abbreviation for Measure of Academic Progress. This has been around for a while, and the benefit of doing something like math is you're testing for growth within the school year. So rather than measuring what the kid brings to school, you measure what the, the school gives to the kid over the course of six, uh, over a semester or two. And you could measure at the beginning of the school year, uh, the middle of the school year, the end of the school year. You would have real-time useful information that help guide both the teacher and the student and give mom and dad some, uh, some you know, confidence that uh, we're making some progress. And it would provide a more useful measure of whether the school's really doing its job or not. So uh, hopefully what we'll be moving is to something like math testing because it's timely, it can guide your current year teaching, and it measures what teachers and schools are bringing to kids, not just what kids are bringing to school. And the good news, of course, is actually Nebraska is moving in that direction. So thankfully, uh, we do have uh, potentially in the next school year, we'll uh, switch to NSCAS growth. Uh, so this would actually be aligned with our state standards, but measuring growth and go away from the old way we did measuring our schools, which I actually honestly thought did more harm than good. So fingers crossed we'll move this direction and start getting better information and quit reporting data the old way, uh, which really just told us where the rich and poor kids are and which schools serve the rich and poor kids. Uh, this might actually be a better approach.